The major indice is dropping for a third straight day. Let's bring in Catherine Keaton, uh, CEO of BNY Mellon Wealth Management. Catherine, great to have you with us. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Great to be here. It seems like rates of, you know, most recently has been the reason why stocks have been having some difficulty um, maintaining their gains and moving higher. How do you view, you know, a 4.3% on the 10-year, for instance, and, and if we stay at that level for longer? Yeah, so if you think about the market this year, we started the year bond market, stock market, all ready for recession. And then what happened is data came in, it was a little stronger than expected. By May, all of a sudden the market said, hmm, maybe we're not gonna have a, a recession. And you saw the equity market just leap forward in May and June and July. Now, here we are in August, and what's the market saying? Oh my gosh, we may not have a recession. And you're actually seeing that in the bond market, obviously, with um, stock market sold off four or 5%, bond market sold off even more with the 10 year up 60 basis points to 430. So, what does that mean? You know, our base case is inflation is sticky, it sticks around a bit longer. We've had a great drop from 9% to 3.2, but the 3.2 down to the 2 is a little less straightforward. Uh, interest rates do stay high for longer. But our base case is that because of the strength of the economy, we can have a slowdown, we can have a correction in the market, and we can have a slowdown in the economy without going into recession. And that remains our base case. Is that the way you're positioning your portfolios for a pullback in the markets? It is how we're positioned. So I would call our positioning um, in our portfolios uh, balanced. In other words, we're at our normal equity weight. We're not overweight. We're at our normal equity weight. We're overweight the U.S. for a variety of reasons. And we're also balanced when it comes to the bond market. Um, you know, we understand that it's been a long time since the 10-year was at 4.3%, 15 years. I, I greeted all of our new analysts, our college graduates that <laughs> joined our company uh, it, on Monday, a thousand of them. And, you know, when you think about the last time uh, the 10-year was at 4.3%, they were seven years old. It's been a long time. Uh, but nonetheless, um, you know, our base case is it's good to be balanced in bonds too. And now's actually the time to take some duration. We haven't done that in a long time because rates have been so low. But we think now's the time to take some duration because then bonds behave like bonds. You get your yield, which is a bit higher, and you also get might a gain get some when the market might, goes down. Wait, or, unless... It, unless the bond market continues to sell off, then it's not time. Because there are a lot of people probably buying the 10-year at 3.8 and 3.9. They're already, they have a, a paper loss, obviously. They can wait 10 years or always get, but it's like the same problem we saw it in the banks. If you don't mark the market and you're feeling good about yourself, you're definitely not getting a competitive return. So you would say Tina's dead and there is an attractive alternative in bonds right now. You're, you're confident enough that 4.3 is not going to be 6-2 in a year and a half. That's right. That's what we think. And actually, when you look at industry fund flows, they're not going to bonds. They're going to money market funds. Money market funds have reached yet another all-time high. Very unusual. So they'll unusual. be wrong. They'll be wrong. They Very should, unusual they should be when the economy's in. growing. Very so, unusual. Right. Um, and so, again, we're, we're pretty confident that rates are going to stay higher for longer, but our base case is that they do begin to, they do begin to but drop. But you didn't take money out of stocks and increase your bond allocation. You have no, we're the, neutral. We're neutral. You have the, wh Correct. which is what? For, and you're a wealth manager, so you've got to have a, uh, what, do you, what do you usually have, 40% uh, bonds? I don't know what. You know, every, every client is dinner, but different, but you could say 60, 40 or so, 60% or so in equity and equity and type investment, 40% or so. It might be a little lower but that um, in bonds. But we're, again, we're neutral on duration. We're taking duration. We're not extending it beyond a neutral um, and bias. And not but corporates. That's you're are. talking governments. I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking across the, the board, but oh, most okay. of our clients who pay taxes, they buy munis. They buy so munis. We're neutral duration, yes. And, and what is that, seven years? It's five years. Five years. to six. Yeah. Five to six, okay. Within equities, though, are there pockets still that, uh, you know, the valuations are, are just too high given where interest rates are? I mean, is there still further adjustment? We talked about, you know, a lot of the magnificent, quote-unquote, magnificent seven down about 12 percent from recent highs. Um, semiconductors also. I mean, we've got a key report from NVIDIA coming up, which will sort of be a, a test there in the AI trade. What's your view? Yeah, so valuations remain on the high side, right? We're about 19 versus a 16 to 17 uh, long-term average, but I always step back and remind everybody that we're investing in an economy. So where are we in the economy? And, you know, a lot has happened in the last three years. But if we go back to before COVID, 
we actually had a very strong economy in this country. We were in the 11th year of an expansion, the longest since World War II. And then we stimulated when COVID hit, right? Interest rates down to zero, $6 trillion of stimulus. And when you look at where we are today, um, the consumer, 70% of the economy, is actually stronger than they were back in 2020. Their wealth has grown because the value of their homes, their equity portfolios is up. They still have cash, $500 billion of that COVID money, what hasn't been spent yet. And you look at companies, and they're stronger, too. They have cash on their balance sheets. They took advantage of those low rates to refinance. There's not going to be a lot of refinancing need for a couple of years. We think rates will be lower by then. So we actually have a very strong economy that we think will support the equity market, not without volatility, not without pullbacks. But think about this year. The market was up 20 percent at the end of July. We've just lost 4 or 5 percent. You know, the normal correction is 14, 15% a year. We could have that this year and still have positive equity market returns.